The 1st of December is World AIDS Day, and it's a day that holds a special place in my heart. I saw firsthand the damage that HIV and AIDS can do when I worked in Botswana in the early 2000s. I was training teachers in the College of Education and I had a couple of classes of 25 students in each. And once in a while, one of them would be off sick and I'd ask the classmates, do you know where they are? And they would respond, oh, so-and-so is sick. I quickly realized that if someone is sick, it meant that they were more than likely living with HIV. It was almost like a code for living with HIV. But particularly at that time, the whole situation around HIV and AIDS was incredibly taboo and nobody really talked about it. At that time in Botswana, the prevalence rate for HIV was around about 33% across the country. But in the 18 to 30 year old group, which was the group I worked with, it was over 40%. So in simple terms, on average, four in every 10 of my students, because of their age, was likely to be carrying the HIV virus. Now, by this time, there were some very good, highly active antiretroviral drugs on the market, ARVs. But the important thing about ARVs is that somebody must be consistent in the way that they take them or they run the risk of getting even sicker. And unfortunately, that was the case with many of my students. And during my few years in Botswana, I probably lost about a third of my students to age-related illnesses. Again, one can never be sure and a death certificate would never say AIDS because AIDS stands for autoimmune deficiency syndrome. And basically your immune, your immune system is unable to fight off a simple virus like the common cold or a flu. And that would be the cause of death in most cases. When I was living around Francistown in the northeast of Botswana, I'd often see partially finished houses where someone had started building a home that fell sick and often within a family an extended family there'd be one person who had a good income and was able to build a family home and if that person passed away that was it and there were so many partially built homes around Francistown and every other part of Botswana where you might travel to. I've been back to Botswana and to the neighbouring countries a few times since I worked there and things have changed dramatically. People are much more aware now of the causes of HIV and the fact that it's a chronic illness which is eminently treatable. And if someone does follow a regime of taking antiretroviral drugs, then they will be able to live with HIV. And mother to child transmission of HIV should never be a thing in the modern era because if a woman is taking antiretroviral drugs, then the virus will not be passed on to a child. The CD4 count will be kept high and thus the likelihood of HIV transmitting, even through sexual intercourse, is incredibly unlikely. It's negligible. I'd say the, the whole discussion around HIV and AIDS still involves a lot of taboo, but it's nowhere near as it was People are far more open about it, but people don't announce that they're living with the virus, obviously. But th there's not the same kind of social attitudes to someone living with HIV. And many people will visit the clinic to pick up their drugs, maybe on a monthly basis. And it's kind of pretty much an open secret. But again, it's rarely talked about in everyday life. Anyway, it's something which touched me very deeply. And thus, I always remember World AIDS Day on the 1st of December. It's a day I can never forget. And in my next video on this topic, I'll discuss a very personal story about someone I knew who actually passed away from an AIDS-related virus on her 21st birthday. So if you're interested in that or any of my other content about my experiences of living and working 
in sub-Saharan Africa or my family stories or my weight loss journey, then please do follow me. Thank you.